The Brown Park Podcast is brought to you by Grow Clinics. They're Australia's leading hair transplant clinics, and you can go to growclinics.com.au. What is news? Hello. Oh, hello. Hello. Oh, you're starting today. Am I? I don't know. Oh, well, well, there you go. You hey. just did. G'day, mates. It, normally, yeah. Hello. Usually, hey. I was thrown. Me too. Um, guest today is a, a lovely lady by the name of Lauren Brant Hall. You may have known her from High Five when you were a child. Well, why only a child? Maybe I like High Five now. Hmm? That's between you and your God. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> also the wife to the legendary Barry Hall, a previous guest on this podcast. And she was on My Celebrity Get Me Out of Here. I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here. She got the hell out of there. She did. and With she, a man. And she found a husband as well. Look, we're going to chat to her in person uh, on the Brown Park podcast. So hang around. <laughs> The Brown Box Podcast. Question. Hit me. Our guest today, Lauren Brant Hall. Mm-hmm. Right. She was on I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. Have you ever watched that show? No. Okay. So they, they quite often will ask the celebrities to do some pretty disgraceful things, like eat some disgraceful things, mm-hmm. like eyeballs. Eyeballs. Yeah, like animal eyeballs. Like fish eyeballs or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, They have also been known to uh, offer them like an anus that they have to eat. Okay. Yep. On the show. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Okay, right. Not the fellow cast members. (laughs) Well, you know, that's a different type of get me out of here. (laughs) That's that's a late night get me out of here. Um, Or get me into here. Yes, anyway, go. Could you... Do that. You have the weakest stomach of anybody mm. I know. No, I couldn't. Well, it depends. I could probably do an eyeball if I put it in my mouth and just could scull it with water. Yeah, you can scull it with water. Then, yeah, I could probably do that. But you have to you have to prove it afterwards that it's gone. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm almost gagging right now thinking, as long as I could, yeah, swallow without having to chew or anything like that, because yeah. I'm textural. That's my thing, like. So then you could actually find yourself in like a situation where they're pouring elephant piss over you and you'd be okay. But drinking elephant piss, not okay. Well, no, I could do that, I reckon, because I'd scull it. (laughs) It wouldn't be the worst thing I've sculled in my life, don't worry. (laughs) Lauren Brandt slash Hall, hello. 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 How are you? Good. Before we start... start. Oh, wow. If if, if we drink anything, we choose nectar. You guys are all over it. (laughs) Love it. I literally cannot drink it right now, but... I'm here in spirit. <laughs> oh, why is that, Lauren? Pregnant. Oh, look out. Again. Number four. Yep, we did it again. <laughs> you, like, you like to be busy, don't you? Apparently. Ooh. Yeah. No, it's, it's awesome. Barry and I uh, always said we wanted four children, and we've got a super colourful life. Yeah. Both of us are just um, really spontaneous people mm-hmm. and go with the flow, and all of our babies have just been delivered to us as the universe saw fit. Yeah. Um, and so we've not, just gone with it. So none planned. It was all just kind of like, oh, if it happens, it happens. So the second one, we said we'd like to have a second one. Yep. Uh, and we tried. Yep. But, I mean, what's even trying? We've obviously well, yeah, tried, yeah, yeah. tried having fun. I don't know. We all, we all try. <laughs> all yeah. worked out. I, I, I've had um, a vasectomy and I'm still trying, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, so, and then the other three, they just arrived and gave us a big – Surprise, so. You've wanted four though, didn't you? Do you know what? There's this little clip on I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. That's where I met Barry. Yeah. We had no idea who each other were. We came from completely different worlds, obviously. And I was actually engaged to someone and he was fresh out of a divorce. The the divorce hadn't happened actually. And there's a little clip of us sitting in a, like a waterfall where we had to wash ourselves, and I was shaving his hair with a <laughs> wooden disposable razor and um, I just said to him you know who are you and what are you going through in your life and he said he was going through a divorce and I said did you have any kids and he said no and that was the thing he was most saddened about is that he loves children he's always wanted children mm. um, and he said he'd always want wanted four and I made a joke and I said, oh, I would have them for you except I'm engaged. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Challenge accepted. Holy. Okay. Do you know what? I dug that piece up and I'm definitely going to share it at some stage and with the kids and just say, boys, you got to be careful what you wish for. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Because without that moment, you might not have been here with your family and everything. Yeah. I, I don't know somebody. if I ever would have crossed paths with Barry if it wasn't for that show. We were sitting in a waterfall in the middle of South Africa. 
Like, ridiculous. Well, yeah, if you're going to meet someone, you're not going to actually meet there, are you, unless it's extenuating circumstances. So the universe yeah. definitely brought you together for sure. Yeah, and that's what I mean by we've got such a colourful life is that's how we met and I guess every story after then has sort of followed on from that, something yeah. big and bizarre. Because you know? looking at the two of you, I, I don't, and I don't mean this in any kind of detrimental way, you you don't look like the type that would – you from different worlds almost. Yeah, 100%. Like, career is one thing. You know, children's entertainment and TV and professional sportsmen. Yeah. But our backgrounds and our families and our interests, like everything is different. We have nothing actually that, you know, we don't like the same flavour ice cream. We don't like the same. <laughs> That's um, why it works. Opposites attract. Everything yeah. is different, I know. But deep down inside we have, um, I guess our biggest thing in common is our absolute love for children. Mm. And that's because of the honesty we just find, you know, you can't get that really anywhere else except in children. Um, so, yeah, our hate for adults and our love for children is probably... <laughs> well, there, there you go. And is that why you had three, Christo? You, you <laughs> hate for adults? <laughs> um, possibly, yes. <laughs> or, or is it the intellectual connection that you actually like yeah, better with the kids? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, we're breeding our own friends. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I love it. Exactly right. I, yeah. I, sometimes I think that and I go, I've just bred my own friends and it's great. Yeah. Um, all right, let's go back. When we were talking about you coming on the podcast, the most mm. interesting thing was that you said, I don't think I've got much to share. Yeah. <laughs> and I've gone, are you fucking kidding? I know. I held it off because of that, actually. <laughs> like you have an, a very interesting life. Thank you. That's all right. Even though you don't necessarily think so. But from the outside looking mm. in, people are interested in, well, A, because you and Barry are a couple and your life together and how that all works and, and your children who are all mirac- like blonde Scandinavian looking children. Mm-hmm. <laughs> are they all blonde, are they? Blonde hair, blue eyes. Where'd yeah. they get the blonde? Was Baz blonde before he lost yeah, it? Yeah, he's got that very Scandinavian. He's like a Viking from back in the day. He looks like a Viking, doesn't he? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Imagine going toe to toe with him back in the day. Um, high five. Yeah. How did you. So that was a, like, that must seem like a lifetime ago from How long now. ago was that? 2000 and. Oh, God, nine is when I went into High Five. What were you doing before High Five? So I've always been a performer. Um, Being creative is just my passion. And, um, yeah, I just love the thrill of expressing myself through acting and dancing and singing and dressing up and all of that. So I've got three older brothers and I was, I guess, your quintessential girly girl. Mm. Um, And I I was just basically – preparing to be in something like High Five. Mm. So how did that come about? So I had a manager <laughs> when I, I was manager. so young. Yeah. <laughs> I had no idea what How that old were meant. you when you went in? So how old were you No, then? I was 19 okay. when I joined. But she just basically called and said there's an audition for High Five and I knew straight away that that was my job. Yeah, uh, yeah. I had little niece and nephew that were two and one and I actually was watching High Five with them and I had thought when I saw it, that's my job. So the audition came up and from the moment um, I got the audition, I just knew that that I was going to get it. So High Five was already existing when yeah. you jumped in. You were round yeah, two, weren't so you? so I was round two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so, yeah, it was quite a lengthy audition process, flying back and forth to Sydney a few times and it was a cut down process as well. Like it's it started with a one-on-one audition just to see if they were interested and then it was – they invited a whole group back and we would just all take turns in different formations, singing and dancing and getting to know the choreographer and the director and the producers. And yeah, basically you'd either get invited back or not until yeah. it was down to two people and they were looking for two people. So <laughs> you guys got it. Did you have any creative input w- within the group or was that, was it you just, you were, you're going to sing this, this is what you're doing. Yeah. You so go. it was fully scripted. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had incredible people working on the show mm. um, and it was all child education based. So uh, if you've ever sat down and watched an episode, guys. Oh, I have. You'll actually learn my, something. My, my, <laughs> kids, my kids back in the day, yeah, it was high five, the wiggles, we've yeah. gone through it all. But I learned so much being on the show. Did you? Doing so, right, the, there you yeah, go. Do, yeah, doing the educational pieces. I don't know how much I remembered, but <laughs> <laughs> I was learning. Um, yeah, and then towards the end, I actually got interested in designing our costumes. Mm-hmm. So the last series I designed all of my costumes that I wore ah. on the show. And then I had a little label that sold replica costumes of what we wore. Oh, perfect. Yeah, so I started to sell that throughout 
all of our chores a lot through Southeast Asia and Australia. There was a thought about maybe I should continue, but not right now. Not right well, now. when you've got eight balls running around the house, maybe um, <laughs> <laughs> women, you know, girls' yeah. clothing isn't on top of mine. So, yeah. yeah. Well, you could do yeah. little man's clothing. Yeah, well, they've all worn the dresses, the boys. <laughs> they think they're Oh, fun. they're going to hate listening to this back <laughs> yeah. when they're older, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I, w- I want to ask a question about high five, though, because um, there's, this, there's this thing that everybody sees the wiggles and go, oh, rich. They're rich. Yeah. Oh, I know. Have you not Googled me? Yeah, it says what your is net is worth it? is like, like 25 million. Yeah. Is that about right? I know. Yeah. <laughs> Barry's worth like 90 million. It's yeah, so yeah. cool. <laughs> um, the difference between the wiggles and uh, high five was they own themselves. Yeah. Mm. So they were the creators and the owners of the show. So okay. they basically decided what they were going to do with all of their money and were really driven to keep getting you bigger and work. expanding yeah. and stuff. Was you there know. A part of you going, come on, just let me join the Wiggles? No, because no. at that stage, I think it was four, there were four men. Oh, yeah, there was too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's very true. Well, what, was there yeah. a party that wanted to just go out with a collective group and do your own, like a, you know, high there six was, or do something? Do you know, <laughs> the. When I had joined, the original creators of High, of High Five had just sold it to Channel 9 and Southern Cross. Yep. Mm. And then they were looking to sell it. And I was uh. desperate to try and find a way that we could buy it. Yeah. Um, whether it was the whole group or just myself and anyone else that was interested. I just couldn't find millions of dollars. How much was it worth? <laughs> like, what, what, I don't, I don't know how much it sold for, but yeah. it would have been. Is it still on? Is High Five no, still on? Here? No. Well, not that I know of. Not that I know of. So it ended up selling to an equity company that was owned by an, a Malaysian group. Okay. Because it was very popular. We were like rock stars yeah. over there. It was crazy. Um, and then they just took it in a different direction, uh, you know, buying super cheap merchandise, uh, but selling, put a like yeah. thousand percent markup on it and yeah. then making us do more shows. Um yeah, it just lost the magic. Yeah, that's what private equity does. Private equity, equity get in there, they run it yeah. as lean as they can, and then you know, with the ultimate goal of goal yeah. of selling it off at some point. But so yeah. I ended up um, resigning because of the fact that it, I felt it lost its heart. Yeah, and um, yeah, I was just a workhorse in the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I really wanted to buy Humphrey. Remember Humphrey Bear? I did some Humphrey Bear before oh, High you? Five. Yeah, did you get out of town. T- really what, what? You were in the costume, or no? no you were on like the show. I was like the hostess. Well, yeah, next, yeah. On the, on, the, on the actual show, on or the live, live shows, not the TV. Yeah, because Humphrey was up for sale a while back, was and he? I'm like, oh, I would love to buy the bear Humphrey. that wears no pants. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and he doesn't say anything. Like, that's no. a perfect job for you. Exactly. Hey? Brown punk. Thanks to Grow Clinics for continuing to support the Brown Park Podcast. And has your confidence dimmed alongside your thinning hair? Do you find yourself avoiding mirrors, hiding beneath hats, longing for the days your hair danced in the wind? Well, you're not alone. Hair loss can take a toll, but it doesn't have to steal your joy. With Grow Clinics, you can rewrite your story. They offer a path to rediscover your vibrant self, a journey towards a thicker, healthier head of hair, and their innovative techniques delivered by compassionate experts can transform not just your appearance, but your perspective. At Grow Clinics, they understand the emotional weight of hair loss. They believe in empowering you with personalized solutions, honest advice, and unwavering support. You're not just a patient, you're a partner in rediscovering your confidence strand by strand. So don't let hair loss dim your inner glow. Take the first step towards a fuller, happier you. Contact Grow Clinics today for a free consultation and learn how they can help you rewrite your narrative at growclinics.com.au. Coming up this season on Two Lives. I've wasted too many years of my life focusing on what's wrong with me. What I have learned through this is that I am enough. Damn it, I'm good enough. It was tough to disappoint my mother. It was tough to watch my father feel like he failed. That was hard. So, yeah, I turned my life around in prison. It actually was very comforting to know I'm not a bad person trying to get good. I was a sick person trying to get well. All that and more in Season 9 of Two Lives. The Brown Podcast. So after High Five, what did you end up doing? Or you just... Decided to take a bit of a chill out for a while or? So, no, I wanted to, I was fresh and keen to like really get into the industry and do something different. I was living in Sydney. I had a pretty good, um, you know, big time management group. And I, the first thing I did was a pantomime with Bonnie Lithgow. Yep. Um, I played Princess Jasmine in Aladdin, which was cool because nice. I didn't even have to audition. I think. Let's gave it to you. Yeah. Oh, do you know what? That was off the back of I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. Yeah. So that was the first thing that I did. Yeah. Um, 
I'm quite sure I got paid the least amount out of anyone in this show because I was just like, yes, I'll do I'll a show. In. In. No, just Damn, I can't. Yeah, Don't I'm pay so her. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> did that one for free. <laughs> um, but I did that show, which was cool. And I, you know, I mean, when lo- I look back at it now, media is such a selfish career. Mm. And it has to be because you're your business, your own business, like it's you. So. Yeah. It's such a fine line between who you are as a person, who you are as a business. And, yeah, I was just very confused, I think, between what was what. So I was quite an open person when, looking back on it, you do have to rein it in and go, okay, this part's business and this part's personal. You've got to keep a lot of emotion out of it. So how long between High Five and I'm a Celeb? Oh, just a few months. Oh, was it? Yeah. So you were in High Five that long? How, how long I mean, were you obviously in High Five for? About five and a half, six years. Okay. And when yeah. was I'm a Celebrity? I mean, I could probably try and reverse map that, but yeah, I'm like not going to. 2015. Okay. Was that long ago now? Yeah. Then how did I'm a Celebrity get me out of here come about? Um, so same thing. I had this manager um, who was a great person. Like, actually, I know. Oh, I was going to say, is there sarcasm in that? <laughs> no, or I, not, no, no? I put that there because most of them aren't. Yeah, <laughs> but this okay. one was. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> she ended up quitting management because she thought, hey, these guys are all wankers. Yeah, I can't <laughs> deal with all these <laughs> dickheads. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and she just said, there had been some interest for me in another show, which she put me up for, and she was the casting director. Mm-hmm. So that was her job before manager. And then oh. she got given the opportunity to be a manager and she said, will you come on and be one of my clients? Because she had had interest in me. I don't know why, but I was the redhead. I don't know why. Listen to, listen to you. You sell Stop yourself short all the time. Yeah. Come on now. Oh, kind. Um, yeah, so that basically came up. She said, Would you be interested in doing it? And I was like, Yeah, I would. Yeah. I was just up for anything. Yeah. Um, when I say I was up for anything, I mean, I got offered to be on the cover of Maxim, which is a men's magazine. Mm. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I will. <laughs> I didn't really think into it. You know, I've grown up with brothers. I'm pretty good with the male banter. I don't take offense to anything. I'm not sensitive at all. Mm. And I had worked my butt off. Um, I was doing CrossFit at the time. And I was really proud of how fit I was as a female. Mm. So when they said, do you want to get in a bikini and pose? I was like, yeah, I do. For because, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I was really proud of. You've um, worked hard to do it. And that's, you know, yeah. a lot of women do pull women down that have put in the work. Oh, sometimes. Yeah. yeah. And then I did the cover and then I got. Um, a spot on the project and I to Buttros wouldn't even look at me in the eye because I'd sexualized myself in the front of a men's magazine. I would have either. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Never heard of him. And I was like, I'd, I'm a good person. We're ambassadors for the same like charities, yeah. you know, mm. <laughs> I just, yep. I just had what it took to yeah, the confidence. Yeah. And um, so I, that's what I mean when I said I was just up for anything. Um, I didn't really know about how much scrutiny you get from, I don't even know mm. who it is. It's the media itself that scrutinise you yeah. at times. Um, so then the opportunity for I'm a Celebrity came up and I jumped on that and I just enjoyed the process. But I didn't – I know a lot of people go on there with a plan of this is how we're going to act because this is what we want to get out of it. Yeah. Mm. And I didn't. I was yeah. just having fun. Um, and then coming out of that, Bonnie asked me to be Jasmine. Yeah. I guess it was the publicity that was sort of around at the time. And I did that show, which was cool. Um, awesome. And then – after that, everything went a bit interesting for me. <laughs> Define interesting. <laughs> there was a big scandal that I had an affair. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's when I really felt the scrutiny. And I basically just went to America. Yeah. And just the stayed there you. for three, so three this or four was months. After I'm a celeb. Yeah. I, oh, it was after the pantomime. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I just went and um, spent some time on my own and just. It's really cool when you go away on your own because every decision is yours and yep. you have to mm. follow your intuition. Mm. So I had some interesting times there and I've kind of got my, you know, what happens on tour stays on tour, but yeah. by myself. <laughs> yeah, hey, yeah, that's good. Hey. <laughs> You're your own vault. Yeah, there's yeah. no one telling the stories. That's yeah. Good. yeah, I mean, America is, it's crazy. It's so different. Yeah. And if you know certain people, you go to certain places and you just think this is wild, you yeah. know, yeah. partying with, you know, One Direction at that stage and, certain nightclubs and going into these like speakeasies that you wouldn't even know existed. Mm. And um, I was living with a, a girl that she was actually an Australian girl, but she was a personal trainer to, you know, John Legend and his wife and Hillary Clinton and like Drew Barrymore. Oh, wow. So yeah, it was just, and it was so normal. In those circles. Yeah. 
Yeah. Did you was, get to hang out in those circles for a while? There was a few opportunities where, yeah, I, yeah, I did. That's cool. Which was crazy. Um, and it was just a whole other look on life because you think they're these like, you put them on a pedestal when you're here in Australia, yeah. Yeah, all yeah. these famous people, and mm-hmm. then you realise they've got they're so just, much yeah. shit going on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. you only seen the highlight reels like everyone else. Oh, yeah. 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 And they're just, they're so normal. And they're also dealing with all of the same scrutiny and yeah. everything. So, um, yeah, it wasn't long after that that I actually came back. So um, what made you come back? Was there a thing where you said, I've just got to go home now? Or uh, you just got sick yeah, of the I'm LA lifestyle? very life? close with my family. Mm. Yeah. And I was putting on heaps of weight. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're drinking America, and partying every yeah, night, yeah. 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 And yeah. America. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Everything's large. Yeah. 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 Um, so I came back and, you know, had having had put on weight, and being swollen from the plane trip, the first person that greeted me was a freaking paparazzi <laughs> who Matt. still oh, follows yes. me around, the same one oh, for tw- yeah. 20 years. God. Um, and I was like, oh, and he got into the elevator with me. <laughs> there was Did nowhere he? to turn. And not just snapping photos. And I was like just staring at him. It was a red-eye flight too, so I wasn't interested. Oh. And he was just looking back at me and I was like, this is so weird. <laughs> when you're looking your best, feeling your best. Yeah, and <laughs> my, <laughs> one of my brothers was with me. He picked me up and he was just like, Oh, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I came back from that and actually worked in my family's business for a little bit because mm. uh, I, at that stage, I my manager, she decided she wasn't going to be in a manager anymore and I was trying to work out how do I handle this like bad this media shit storm. and this yeah. scrutiny and I escaped for a while but I had to come back to it. Did you ever talk about uh, like as – I've known you for a while, but I can't yeah. remember you ever actually talking about it or discussing your side of the story or, or is no. it just something that's locked in the vault and that's it? Yeah, um, I haven't because I, from everything that I've experienced being so, you know, eager and open and honest and believing that the world is this great place. Um, it's not. Yeah, it's just bit me in the butt so many times and yeah. I've realised like sharing anything is – is not going to do in me any good. Yeah. No, especially in the media. Like you said, they're going to take everything negative yeah. because negative media sells or negative media yeah. gets the clicks. Yeah. So it'll serve you no purpose. So I've never actually added any fuel to the flame yeah. at all mm-hmm. because it's not going to do me any good or all my loved ones and that's something that I have to consider. Yeah. yeah. Um, if I was going to say anything, it just would be about how different the treatment is between male and female in these situations. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. more forgiving on the males. 100%. Oh, for sure. yeah. Which for me plays a really huge role, I guess, on my ego. Or yeah. Just in what's mm. right and wrong, justice, because I grew up with three boys, so I've always seen myself as completely equal. Like yeah. there's nothing that they can do that I can't do and vice versa and good and bad. Yeah, and for so, sure. And look at your household. You are yeah. outnumbered. <laughs> in the, and I keep attracting these really strong-willed males yeah. in my life. So there's definitely a lot of um, um, male energy yeah. that kind of permeates through me. Um, so, no, I'm not going to give you the scoop. No, no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> I, no you don't want to no. even ask that. No. Yeah. Uh, but like this is a, a safe space, so we won't do that. But, but honestly, I've, an article came up the other day and it still mentions it. Does it really? Yeah, it's just for like bait clicks. Yeah. 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 Um, Which, whatever. So I've moved on and I've grown and done all all of my personal growth. Did you have to do therapy through that? I mean, how did it like, because it would have been fucked. I think America was kind of like my therapy. Yeah, 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 just getting away from it. Yeah, I've been pretty good. If I'm getting negative attention, but I personally think like I don't deserve that. I don't Mm. let it get You don't take it on. Yeah, I'm similar to that too. I already stood up for what part I believe that, um, you know, was a mistake or what I regret or anything like that. And I dealt with that myself. I didn't need yeah. anyone telling me what they thought I should be doing yeah. about the situation. Yeah. So I'm pretty good with that. Yeah, good one. Yeah. Um, and then I <laughs> – interesting though, when you talk about did I have therapy, when Barry and I started dating, it all came up. Oh, did it? Of course it did. he yeah. was like my therapist. Yeah. He yeah. is just such a level-headed person. Like if you looked at – Pictures of our minds. His would just be a straight line, and would mine it? would be a bloody scribble roller coaster. You know, he's just his like it would be just straight line. Does he get excited? Like, does he have the highs and lows? Like, does he like? Is there something that he'd be like, "Woohoo, fuck you, yeah, this is mad"? Or yeah, is he just easy level? Right, okay, <laughs> yeah. Cars, yeah. 
Yeah. I was going to say it's not football because when we spoke to him, he mm. goes, eh, football's football. I'm not really. Never really watched yeah. it, you know, whatever. Yeah. 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 No, he loves cars. He likes a good result in UFC. Another thing, like I think that's the in, the stupidest, most barbaric, grossest sport in the world. <laughs> and he is obsessed. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, he even his high moments are like – Short lived, yeah. and then he gets on with it. Mm. So, yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah I know. Good on him. Yeah. So, at what point that you came back from America, mm-hmm. did you reconnect with Barry? So, I ended up working with my family's business. Um, yeah. They were going through a pretty tough time, and I thought that my talents, and what I had to offer. What sort of business was it? So, they were making professional uniforms for sporting teams. Okay, so right. all of the pro teams, yeah. um, including all of the AFL team. Well, yeah, right. What's the brand? A big BLK. Oh, That's I remember right. they, they yeah. had a place up in Bean Lee too. I'm yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, they basically wanted someone to manage the relationships with the professional teams. Mm-hmm. Once again, that was me just jumping into a completely male-dominated world yep. and feeling 100% comfortable. Um, so I every <laughs> – this is actually quite an interesting love story. Every weekend I would fly to a different state to visit one of our pro teams yep. and we started noticing that Barry was flying to different states to commentate on the games for Fox Sports. Mm-hmm. Yep. And you were still in contact with him? Not really. Okay. He had reached out at one time just to say, sorry for all the shit you're going through. Okay. Um, I don't know if I replied, but that was it. <laughs> Plan hard to get, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe in hindsight. Yeah. Um, and then we ended up both at a son's game and I was there with my uh, niece and nephew and brother and he was commentating and I called him and I saw him on the field take his phone out of his pocket and screen me. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh did he? You son of a bitch, Barry. I'm looking at you. So then I took a photo of myself doing the bird yeah. yep. with him in the background and I sent him the text. Um, and I think he felt pretty bad about that. But at the end of the game, I was kicking the f- – that's when we could all go on. I don't know. Can yeah. you still go and kick a yeah, footy? I think so. on the yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, the yeah, sun's going to do, yeah. yeah. do it at times, I don't think. So we were kicking a footy at the end um, with my nephew and I just felt this huge man give me a bear hug from behind and lift me up. Um, and it was Baz. And I was like, oh, hello. Hello. Feel bad, do you? Oh, yeah, I'm not screening me now, are you, yeah, my phone? <laughs> yeah. Um, and anyway, so he kicked the footy with my nephew for a bit, which my brother thought was really cool. Epic, yeah. Yep. And, um, and then he had to race off on a flight and he said to me, next time I come up, we should actually catch up. Yep. And the next time he came, we did actually catch up. So you took his call? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Screen the first one, took the second one. Yeah. And we just had an awesome first date. Like awesome. We just went yeah. and had dinner at, in Broadbeach. Was it a date or was it just a catch up at that stage? Did you see it as a date? Did he I see think we it as both a date? saw it as a date. Oh, there yeah. was a spark when he gave me the big There was definitely hug. a spark on I'm a Celebrity. because I Yeah, because I remember seeing it going, yeah, what's going on here? Mm. He was always like my comfortable space. Yeah. Um, just well, that's because that, he's so big. He's ground- like a human yeah. pillow. <laughs> <laughs> just that grounding. If I was having a hard time, I'd just sit next to him and he would ground me. Um, but, yeah, we had that first date and then we saw each other every weekend. So I would organise that I was visiting the teams wherever he was commentating. Oh, well played. Uh, On the business time too. Yes. Yeah. yes. <laughs> and no one knew about it. Too good. We were planning these little like romantic Rendezvous. weekends everywhere. Right. And uh, I think it was maybe in Adelaide we had gone to dinner at the boathouse, I think it's called. We had oysters, we had chocolate and I fell pregnant. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> over so dinner. That was easy. Wow. <laughs> Don't do that in public. I looked back onto it. I was like, it was that night. But uh, that was a huge shock because we'd only been officially dating, yeah. like having had an answer for two months. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So the stars al- aligned and went, right, you and you. You're both stubborn. You both had selfish mm. lifestyles. You got to get together and have these beautiful children. We're going to force the issue. Yes, make it happen. Yep. Brown punk. We need to say thank you to Grow Clinics for their continued support of our podcast. Now, if you're sick of zooming in on your hairline, focusing on your thinning hair with every picture that gets taken, maybe it's time to explore a Grow Clinics hair transplant. Their experienced team combines the precision of science with the artistry of aesthetics, ensuring a hairline that looks and feels completely natural. They employ state-of-the-art technology for seamless, minimally invasive procedures that maximise comfort and recovery. Now, there's no one size that fits all here. They believe in personalised solutions, addressing your unique concerns and goals for a hair restoration journey as unique as you are. Your comfort and confidence are their top priorities. From initial consultation to post-procedure care, 
Grow Clinics provides a supportive environment every step of the way. We can attest to that. Grow Clinics track record speaks for itself, so join many of the individuals who have experienced the transformative power of Grow Clinics hair transplants. Head over to their website at growclinics.com.au to book a free consultation and tell them Brown Park sent you. Hey, while we've got your attention, listen up. We just want to ask a quick favour. If you could go to your podcast provider, wherever you're listening to this, and write a lovely review, give it a rating, do whatever you can, we would be most appreciative. Or even at the very least, just hit that little subscribe button so then the episodes when we release them come up in your feed. Exactly. That is all. Back to the show. As you were. Thank you. The Brown Box Podcast. I wanted to ask... You posted on your socials that the story about baby number four is interesting. Yeah, they yeah. did it in a restaurant. I don't like know. Last night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know sure, whether you guys. wanted to share that yet. Yeah, I can. I can. So we definitely knew that we wanted to have a fourth baby, but we uh, just were dealing with three. <laughs> yeah, which is hard work. Yeah. Do you get much sleep? Are the kids, well, you, you got three now, no, are they I all sleeping? Slept for seven years. No, because no, no. three under seven is like, yeah. I've got three under 13 and that's mm. that's okay, 13, 10 and yeah. eight. Mm. That's not bad now. But yeah. three under seven is like, oh my God. Yeah, and I've been breastfeeding straight for five years. I haven't yeah. had a break. I've like tandem fed. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It's been insane. Um, and now you're going to do it again. Well, yes, <laughs> I know. I'm trying to get the second one somewhat weaned but um the, sorry the third one somewhat weaned yeah, i'm losing i'm losing track uh yeah so look we we were just like maybe we'll wait a little bit before we have the fourth because yeah, yeah. we're really under the pump here we also choose to homeschool yeah i was gonna that was I so was we have say. no child care no kindy no school nothing Oof. so it's the two of you who does the majority of the homeschooling uh well we're unschooling which means we don't do anything. We just live through life and follow okay. our children's passions and interests. Do you just get them to watch the episodes of a high five, the ones that add value, and you or you sing it to them? There you go. We also have a no screen rule, so do they're you? only yeah. allowed one movie a week on a Friday night. Wow, um, good job. Wow, but it makes it hard because the TV's like a babysitter. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah, but they do love high fives. So, so there's no I, no screens at all, no iPads, no no nothing. They, no. Oh, I admire that so much. Unless they go to my grandparents, like their grandparents. Yeah, yeah and then and it's they, like the they whole time. <laughs> they live there now. Yeah. <laughs> they walk back with square yeah. eyeballs. <laughs> I mean, it, it affects them though. Man, yeah. I see it with yeah, my kids because we don't have that policy. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, you can see if they've had too much time on the yeah. screen, they turn into little assholes. And then when they go to mm. the grandparents, the grandparents go, oh, they're so easy to look after. Wait a minute, they're just on the goddamn iPad the whole and time. And you, you fed them sugar the whole time. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Well, that's the thing because they're with us all the time. If we've given them screen time and they've turned to assholes like yeah, you yeah. said, I mm. probably wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, they do. Um, we can't send them anywhere. Like they don't go to kindy the next day or school. Yeah. They're with us. Yeah, so yeah. Like, a cop damn it. it. Yeah. Um, so. But anyway, I um, – well, you invited a female onto the show, so let's go there. I hadn't had like my period or my cycle or my bleed since Samson, who's my two-year-old. Yeah. And so I thought, let's just concentrate on like trying to get that back because it's a very healthy part yeah. of a female. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was working really hard at just being super fit and super healthy and trying to get some sleep. And then I wasn't getting sleep and then I was really tired and then I had no motivation and I was like, what is wrong with me? <laughs> and that went on for ages. And then I went to Pilates and my tights were a bit tight. <laughs> and I felt really nauseous doing the upside down stuff. And you went, hello. So I thought I've just got to do a test. And so I did a test, like not even thinking anything. And a second line came up and I just yelled at Barry and I said, and this is pregnancy, by the way, not COVID. <laughs> you're, 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 I was going to say, you, you don't wee on COVID tests. No, 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 not yet. And I just went, ah, there's a second line. And he was like, what are you talking about? What are you doing? And I'm like, it's a pregnancy test. And he was like, what? Oh, the, the line looks faded. And try it again tomorrow. So I was like, yeah, good idea. And we just parted ways for the day. <laughs> and then um, the next morning I did it, my first wee of the morning, which is the best time to yeah, test. Yeah. Mm. That's the strongest one. It was still, yeah, yeah, it was the potent. It was still there, the second line. So I went for a walk and got a different type of test, the digital yeah. one that says literally the word pregnant. Yeah. And that came up and I was like, no, Barry, I think we're on. This yeah. is on, yeah. And you hadn't had your period in two years. Well, this is the thing. I never had a bleed. So most girls would think, oh, I'll test to see if I'm pregnant because mm. they've missed a period. Yeah, yeah. I didn't mm. have that. So um Do you and know then, why? 
or is it just because you've been on for like seven years or? I think I'm, I get low in iron and I honestly think that my body was just saying, okay, we'll ovulate, but I'm not going to lose iron every month. Do you basically. go and get your iron done? Like, I'd, um, I have had infusions, yeah, yeah. but um, do you know what I take? Beef liver capsules. Or uh, yeah, if you yeah. have raw beef liver, it's mm. even better. It's the best source of iron. Yeah. Yeah, it works yeah. wonders. So though. then how do you know how far along the baby is? So I didn't. Yeah. I didn't. And by the time I tested, I was seven weeks. So oh, that's why I was hell. feeling so tired. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> lucky I didn't have any of those crazy big nights. You know how people yeah, are like, yeah, no I benders got so or anything, drunk yeah. and I didn't even know I was pregnant. <laughs> well, but it don't, it's such a it's, – it's, it's such a um, – surprise when you find out that way um we mm. were super happy but super shocked maybe about a week ago yeah <laughs> well, once you processed oh, it you'll find yeah. to be honest i just went oh my gosh how are we gonna do this because i'd already been feeling so tired from obviously having been pregnant not knowing it yeah, yeah. and i just looked at barry and i was like oh, how are we gonna do this and he's like we'll work it out i want to ask about homeschooling mm. or unschooling yeah. Hats off to you for doing it. I have three kids and there's no way that I can do it. COVID was the worst yeah. for us, wasn't it? Like yeah. we had to home. Well, you've got one. So yeah, I, know, I, I think got, you should true. stay out of this conversation. Well, uh, <laughs> very true. Very true. Hey, you look, can borrow one of mine maybe. No, I'm good. I'm good. You know, one and done. One and done. Uh, obviously, there, there, uh, there will be uh, cynics out there that go, oh, mm. you can't do that. How? Mm. What does an average day for you look like in a unschooling? unschooling? Don't worry. I'm My parents... Well, my dad's a bit of a cynic, so okay. <laughs> I'm used to it. Um, so our whole belief is it's pretty much the first seven years. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you guys know of Rudolf Steiner, who has the Waldorf education Heard of philosophy. Mm. Um, I really dived deep into that. I just felt when we had these children, I was like, oh, this is the most awesome version of a human ever. Yeah. Mm. And then they just get ruined. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what adults. school does. You've got to fall in line, follow the rules. If you don't get this mark, then you're not a, you know, you're not a, you know, success and all this type of thing. Like, man, and that's what I felt right through it's school. The testing. Mm. Yeah. The test, constant yeah. testing. Yeah. That's the same for every child. Yeah. But every child is different. different yeah. Totally. So Steiner really looked at every child as an individual soul, which mm. they are, and mm. that they have a destiny, and it's your job as their nurturer to let them fulfill what that is without yeah. any boundaries. Okay. So that's the idea. And the first seven years of their life is where all of their pathways are formed in their brain that yeah. will make them perceive the world and react to the world yeah. in their individual ways. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it can be to their detriment mm. unless you've ever, you know got this perfect world for them, which is what we're trying to allow for our children basically. It's just that they can be whoever their little souls want Mm. and need and desire to be it's very testing on us as parents because we were brought up in generations where we were told Go this to is the expectation yeah. Yeah. sit down shut up do this this is good this is bad mm. boys do this girls do this yeah so barry and i are, it's called unparenting where we're constantly triggered by things that we would have gotten trouble for or yes. weren't allowed to do yep. when we were younger yep. but yep. now yep we have to have a different look on it for our children. So it's really hard work, mm. but the what you get out of it is just these, oh, like these full, colourful children that know about emotions and yep. expressing themselves and interest. So, yeah, a day for us is basically catering to whatever everyone needs in that day and we all support each other mm -hmm. um, knowing that we're all different and, mm. oh, my goodness, my children could not be more different really? from each other. Mm. Yeah. It's like a dance. Yeah. <laughs> We're all just dancing around each other. There's pushback. There's like and forgiveness. And you bo you're both involved in this every day? Yeah. Yeah. We really are. And everyone actually asks us, you know, your careers were soaring and you could be doing this and this and this and this, but we have a solid intention for this stage of our children's life, for every first seven years of all of our children mm. to be completely present. Mm. Yeah, so, good. yeah, that's basically what it is. And there will be a stage where my children will need to learn things like yeah. reading and writing. Yeah. But when they do, it'll be their choice and they'll be ready and they'll pick it up like that. Because so will it be school or not? Like, so will it be school at any traditional type of school at any point or you don't see that? I think we, if we did a school, it would be a Steiner school. Right. Yeah. So there's some amazing ones yeah. around. Yeah. Um, but it will be when the, our children say, can yeah. we go? Yeah, yeah, good job. How does it go about forming friendships? Do you, you said there's a homeschooling group. Yeah. Do you get your kids together and they all play and things like that so they get that interaction? 
Yes. Yeah. So um, they, my oldest belongs to a beautiful group. It's We call it a village. Mm-hmm. And it's not just – it's like I said, we're unparenting ourselves too. So yeah. all of us as parents are learning to receive, mm. which is something that we don't do. So, um, you know, when one of us has a baby – all of the mums for the first six weeks make sure that home cooked meals are delivered every single day for the whole family. That's really cool. excellent. Yeah. Um, if someone's down or needs something, we're all there. If someone needs help, like with a child, because homeschooling is hard, it's like I have to take this child to an appointment. Can anyone have this child for something? Yeah. Then we'll do that. Um, but the resources for homeschooling have expanded oh, yeah, so yeah. much yeah. since COVID. Yeah, yeah. Like there's even you know the. Miller does skateboarding and it's a homeschool lesson at 11 o'clock on a Thursday. You know, they're catering to... Mm. So they actually come yep. to your house, teach them how to skateboard. No, we go to their facility, oh, yeah. but they've yep. put on homeschool lessons because they recognise there's so many children yep. being homeschooled. Cool. My, pe- my yep. kids have been pushing for homeschooling for about 13 <laughs> years now. <laughs> well, see, and I get it because, I mean, we've spoken yeah. about it before, but school for me was hell because I had ADHD and I just didn't learn like every other kid. Mm. And I was always, you know, that naughty kid, the the class clown, all this type of stuff. Mm. And not, I mean, I didn't finish year 10 because I just, it was that time for me to get the hell out of there and you get a trade. It. You're like hated in it. prison mm. Yeah, all that yeah absolutely. I mean, I was, you know, fighting to go to school every day. It was a, yeah. it was pain for mum to, to send me. So I love that now there's a, you know, I guess an alternative path for parents to go, all right, well, maybe schooling isn't for yeah. Him, let's try something else. And with, I mean, like I say, school for me wasn't, I really didn't learn much. I was always bottom of the class. But once I got out of school, that's actually when I started to thrive. Yes. So it's, yeah. Mm. You, you just needed permission to be whoever Correct. you wanted to be. Yeah. And make your own choices and follow your instincts. And, and fuck up a lot. But anyway. yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. that's the other thing. Like, mm. we are all for our kids, like, making mistakes. Totally. Yeah. Because mm. they will learn that's so much lessons. more from that. Yeah. And taking away all kind of expectations. You know, parents get so excited, like, oh, my child's five and they got the award this month yeah, yeah, and, yeah. like, they kicked this many goals and soccer or yeah. whatever it is. And it's like, that's going to change. They're going to give up on that sport next year. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It means nothing. <laughs> have any of your kids got interest in footy? Um, no. I think we're going to have, like, there is a real desire for speed and car adrenaline. Racing. I think we're going to have some serious cars. There's, like, go-kart racing already happening. Well, Barry already... Has a collection, doesn't he? Mm. Last time. <laughs> the face. Mm. The face. Yeah. Now, now, look, not to pigeonhole or anything, but that's a real woman response, I swear to God. Well, that's his first love. Yeah. And then I'm like his second wife. So, look, I think if I said everything in our relationship was perfect and rosy. You'd be lying. I well, think, I think, of course I'd be lying. But I think like, everybody would be. Everyone would go, oh, vomit, like, mm. come on, be realistic. Yeah. And... Definitely one of the factors is these bloody cars. Yeah, but because you know what? The cars don't talk back. Oh, See? oh hey. Don't. <laughs> don't. Uh, I'm on Barry's side on this. <laughs> Lauren. Yes. You said you didn't have a story to tell. Oh, and, and then I talked my ass off, didn't I? You have a story to tell. Oh, thank you. And thank you for, for joining us on the show. Thank you thank for you showing so your much. interest in my humble little life. <laughs> it's an interesting life to watch. I like yeah. it. Very good. Thanks. More to come. Watch this space. The Brown Box Podcast. Why are you happy? It's cool. I don't want to be sad.